You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello and welcome again to the Monster Sci-Fi Show. I am your host, the Monster, and this is the first sci-fi news of 2022. It has been that long, and my apologies, but nonetheless, we shall have a discussion and a good time, hopefully, of... My big three topics, I'll be talking about the Gentle Minions, and what's next after that, Taron Edgerton, maybe as Wolverine, and, as if that was not enough, we'll be talking about some Avatar news that also came up this week. But before we do that, let's do a couple of quick tidbits. Yesterday, um, I was planning to record this with Jane, and my apologies, but I was just not feeling up to it. News came that actor James Kahn has passed away. And one of the things that I always do is that, oh, uh, yes, any death is always a bad uh, way to kind of start off a podcast. But I also like to look at things that I've watched an actress uh, uh, history and how they affect me or in sci-fi news. And James Conn has done a couple of those. There was a movie called Rollerball that came out in 1975, which I've been wanting to watch again for a while. And unfortunately, our library system, for some reason, doesn't have it. So I'm going to have to look into that. We have Alien Nation, which is one of my favorite movies that was adopted to an actual Fox series for one season. And I think five TV movies after that. It, it's a space version, or it's a sci-fi version of In the Heat of the Night. I really love that movie tremendously. It's one of my underrated sci-fi movies. So again, James Conn was great in that. Another one was he was in Dick Tracy as well. And let's not forget Misery, Stephen King, <laughs> in which he plays a writer that offs one of the characters that this woman loves and <laughs> treats him poorly in a very horrible way <laughs> by breaking his ankles. Oh my God. It is the most horrendous moments that I've ever seen. Like I don't mind blood and guts on, but seeing how the foot just, just react to a hammer going at it was just so damn painful. But yeah, uh, Misery. Uh, and of course, he lent his voice to Family Guy and Simpson. So sorry to hear that he has passed. Oh, and there was another movie which I have never seen, but I was looking at his, uh, his resume, so to speak, on IMDb. There's a movie that came out in 1967, the year I was born, and it was called A Countdown. And basically, he plays an astronaut who is heading to the moon, which is two years prior to the moon. So, it just seemed like, are they really getting excited about the idea of like the, the, the reality coming true? So they pretended like this is the man, uh, who's going to the moon. This is like what it takes to be like that because the countdown has begun and the title, the countdown has been played so many times in this trailer. It's like, ugh, it's god awful. I mean, I would love to watch it because it has Robert Duvall in it. So. Um, the other thing too is that, you know, like anything else, he's been nonstop. So even though there's stuff that I've not watched, his next movie is in, um, uh, post production. It's called Fast Charlie. And it stars Morena Bakran, who is in Firefly, who was also in Gotham and in Deadpool. We also have Pierce Bronson and the director is Philip Noyce, who did uh, clear and present danger and Patriot game. So I'm sure uh, we'll get more news about whenever that gets released, but I definitely would be interested to, to watch that. So we also have some Loki news. So there was uh, a Twitter post that had some pictures from the set 
And one of the posters that was in the background has a picture of Kingo, the great Kingo, which, if you've been watching Miss Marvel, there's a thing in which they talk about Kingo. And I'm like, did no one else catch that reference? Because if you didn't, that's fine, because Kingo is from the Eternals. And Kingo became an actor after he fulfilled his destiny or whatever and just became an actor and pretended to be his own lineage. So his great-great-great-grandfather uh, was an actor or whatever and then keep pretending to be the exact same person that the next generation over and over again. So I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so there is a poster there. And uh, something called Phone Ranger which is another poster, but I'm like, I don't know too much about that. But in any case, at least we're getting Loki too. Also this week, we also had the Clerks trailer, Clerks 3 trailer drop. So in essence, what Clerks 3 is all about is that Randall gets a heart attack, which is very similar to what Kevin Smith did in real life. Because he's working at a convenience store, he has the inspiration then to do something with his life. And that's to make a movie. So it becomes very meta, considering how Kevin Smith is talking about his own experiences in his own movie with his own character. So looking forward to it. There's a new Star Trek book called Phasers on Stun, how the making and the remaking of Star Wars changed the world. It is definitely something that I requested in my library, but it has not yet been fulfilled. So no worries there. Um, we also have news about Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which for Daredevil and Kingpin to appear in Echo. We also might get Jessica Jones joining them as well. Nothing official, but just seems to be the rumor mill that's going out there. And what else we have out there? There is also news. And I'm like, I don't think I would want to do this, but so have you ever seen the Joel Schumacher movies, especially the last one, the Batman and Robin? If you love that costume and love the bat nipples, well, good news. You can get it for $40,000. Uh, it seems to be like there's an auction, uh, heritage auction on July 22nd and 23rd. The starting bid at $40,000. So, if you're interested, <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, yeah, I'm all up for memorabilia buying, but I can, uh, I, I don't need to buy that. Although, Alicia Silverstone is back, girl, maybe, but I don't have $40,000. All right, let's just leave it at that. So, banana! Why? That's what they say, right? Banana. So cinemas are starting to ban or have been banning groups in large masses who come well-dressed to watch the Minions, The Rise of Gru. And I get it. <laughs> I get the worry. Now, these are the, the kids that grew up watching the Minion movies, grew up watching Despicable Me, they show their love for this franchise. It is no different from when Star Wars, The Phantom Menace came out and everyone dressed for those movies in their favorite costumes. And they brought lightsabers. And even when the re-release of Star Wars back in the 90s for the special edition, people were bringing out the lightsabers and all that. I get it. And then they started to ban them because they got in the way of enjoyment. I get that too. So, if what these kids are doing is getting their other friends to join them and do this kind of like TikTok thing, fine. I'm all for it. Enjoy it. You deserve it. If, however, <laughs> you ruin the movie for other people, not so cool. That's where it has to end. Unless this is going to be the, this generation's Rocky Horror Picture Show, I don't see this being necessary. I think the idea is cool. 
it helps you know push the the movie to become number one uh universal and uh the minions twitter handle approved this so they got their blessing and i don't see this being any harm but having said that when you see a sign that says due to recent disturbances following the gentle minion trend any group of guests in formal attire will be refused entry for showings of minions the rise of Gru. i guess you would have to then one ticket for maverick and then go to Maverick and then sneak into Minions. I put it to the fans who are doing this trend. Don't ruin it for everyone else. Enjoy having fun getting there, getting your tickets, and supporting your movie. Go for it. Bully for you. But after that point, scale it down. You know, we're not having that in the theaters. Considering how theaters are struggling, it, this should not be a thing. Don't make it a thing anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't see this being like the dressing all fancy like Downton Abbey fans would have done. Then that's what would have been something of, a, of a, an argument there. Like, remember when you used to go get dressed up to go to the cinema <laughs> to watch a film about these little yellow guys? Not anymore. All right, so let's move on to Taron Edgerton as Wolverine. The news of him has been out for years, and I think this is going back from 2019, so pre-COVID. He has been in talks with, I guess, Kevin Feige, and so it is legit because I've looked at different sources. So fans want him to be it. And I'm not knocking Hugh Jackman, but it's like it it's time for him to hang up his claws <laughs> or retract his claws, so to speak. Like I mentioned in the Star Trek Strange New World, when I mentioned about Harrison Ford, there's a time to kind of let it go and give it to someone else, right? Hugh Jackman carried that character, good and bad. He did a fantastic job. And it's now time for someone else to do this. Now, if you're going to look at the physicality between the two, it is really a lot. Hugh Jackman is 6'2", and Taron is only 5'9". Weight, it's only like about 10 pounds difference, more or less. But really, the height is what the issue is. Now, if we're going to go Marvel appropriate, <laughs> Wolverine is not very tall. He's like about 5'3"-ish. And uh, because of his adamantium skeletal structure, he's a very husky-built guy. So, I don't know if you remember, back in the day, before he came to the big screen, at one point, Bob Hoskins was going to be playing Wolverine as a consideration because of Roger Rabbit. And since Bob Hoskins is kind of hairy, <laughs> ew. <laughs> but that could have been your Wolverine. But I remember uh, people were not happy with Hugh Jackman because he's tall and he's Australian. Which, oddly enough, if you're a Spider-Man and Amazing Friends fan, you remember this? We're very happy to have you back, even for a short visit. It's wonderful to see you again, Professor. Firestar, over here. Coming, Cyclops. This is our other new member, Wolverine. Hiya, you doll. Want a piece of fruit? I have heard so much about you. So yeah, that's Wolverine. In an Australian <laughs> accent. You want some fruit? Oh, God. Thank God we didn't get that. And thank God Hugh Jackman didn't play that way. Wolverine is Canadian. He was part of the Alpha Flight, right? So there was this joke that someone else made. He should not have been known as Weapon X, but Weapon A? Yeah. I hope you laughed at that. Because I don't know what that's all about. But in any case, 
He's Canadian, not Australian, not American. Whatever Tamara is planning to do, if he gets this option to roll, uh, if he gets this option to play Wolverine, he's going to have to make it his own thing. Much like I said, if James Bond has different actors, each actor brings their own nuance, their own thing to make that Wolverine or that character stand out from all the others. Let's just do it. And I'm not saying physically, like, Taron has to be like Hugh Jackman. I just think Taron is a great actor. Having seen him in The Kingsman, second one, not so much I was crazy about, but that's not his fault. It's just a, it's a crappy story. But seeing him in Rocket Man, his performance, loved it. Like, I was really, like, so against Rocket Man because of... Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, but I enjoyed seeing him as Elton John. He's got some acting chops. We know he can do action. So, is he the logical choice? Physically? Height-wise, maybe. He just maybe needs to bulk up. Is this a young version of Logan? We shall see. And that's however way Kevin decides to play Wolverine. We'll see. But my vote, not that anyone cares, I would definitely give it a yay to get Taron as uh, as Logan as Wolverine. So, all right. So lastly, we have news. Avatar is coming back, folks. And we have the new movie coming out. Avatar, The Way of Papyrus. <laughs> so if you know Papyrus, the SNL sketch... It's the font <laughs> which Avatar was built on. We're getting more papyrus. But in fairness, I think for myself, and maybe others may feel this way, every time James Cameron goes away and he makes some like odd comments and knocks other movies, I'm like, really, really need to stop talking smack. But he comes back and does something super amazing and does something incredibly like oh my god you really pushed the envelope of filmmaking forward so many times but you know we are getting several movies to the point where he says i may not be able to to, to write all of them because i got so many other things that i need to work on i'm like dude you may not even need to worry about directing the other ones if they don't really take off, because it's been such a long time since we've seen the original Avatar. And it's not as if to say, well, you know, if you're going to do a sequel, you need to do it within a couple of years. It's been about a decade or so, right? But I'm still eager to watch it. I'm just curious to see, do we want to see this in 3D? Or do we have to watch this in, in 3D? I know watching it in the theaters, in 3D had a profound effect watching Avatar. Not the exact same effect as I watched it at home on my regular flat 2D screen, but it, it added such a, a cool element that I never thought I would ever see or experience. So Avatar really needs to kind of make us remember all the good times that we had with Avatar. Not that, you know... Avatar was that memorable, but just the experience of it was. Like, I don't collect any of the Avatar Navi characters or any any ships or anything. It's cool. It looks fantastic. I'm, I'm, I was engaged, but from a collecting point of view, eh, I, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care about tall Smurfs. But in any case, that's one aspect. Now, he's going to be making so many that he can't direct all of them. I'm like, look, I know Disney has, you know, Avatar land in Animal Kingdom and you need to feed the beast. You could have been good with a couple of movies and called it a day. Not so many that you can't do all of them. So that's, we'll see. The other one that he he, he made the other day is that, you know, these movies are long. So be prepared to take a pee break. Which, again, I've conditioned myself 
depending on how long the movie, like Batman, like the Infinity War, like Endgame, when we're running two hours, two hours and 30 minutes plus, I'm prepared. Don't drink anything. Don't have popcorn that makes you thirsty to drink something. It gets really hard to kind of hold your bladder, <laughs> but there, there are times in which you need to go. And there are times in which you miss something that is like, uh, it's nothing. And then you rewatch it again. I'm like, that was a very big moment. I just went to go take a pee and I freaking missed it. And I can't go back and rewatch it or stay in the theater, rewatch the opening scene and wait until that moment comes and then leave because you can't do that anymore. I used to. With that being said, yeah, I get that. But on the same token, I remember back in the day when movies weren't that long, but still long enough that there would be a moment of intermission <laughs> in which you can get up and go take a break and go pee and come back and the movie will pick up. And I think the last time that happened was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And that's not a very long movie either. So again, that's a very long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I'm just saying, I don't want to have to use that stupid P movie app because I didn't want to miss anything. I did that with Doctor Strange, and I missed the opening moments of him meeting the Illuminati. And I had to wait until whatever, 45 plus days to see it streaming on Disney Plus. And I'm like, I got angry because I was coming back. I'm like, God damn it. And you could just see the shadow of me just clenching my fist and cursing. Like, you can't see me cursing at night, but you know what I mean. I was angry. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're going to make a long ass movie, fine. But let's not be so critical. Like, you know, don't worry about it. You can go ahead and pee anywhere you want. I'm like, no. If you're going to watch this movie, I'll watch it. But if I'm not going to be engaged, and I'm like, I'm going to like freaking pee whenever I want now because I don't care about this movie, then you've lost me. So if you got me, I am willing to suck it up. Bladder and other things <laughs> in my body for the long haul. Even for the post credit scenes. Because again, Marvel has taught us, stay for everything. And I've done that. At great cost to my bodily functions. So I'm just saying, there is only so many times I can do this. And if your movie sucks, like it did for the Eternals, and I waited all that time for everything, and I'm like, even the post credit movies a moment sucked, I'll be really freaking angry i'll just leave it at that in any case I'm looking forward to avatar maybe down the road we'll do an avatar rewatch or we'll talk about it before and after with the new movie but again as i talked about with the idea about having a movie pass i'll still watch this i'll still review this but it's not going to happen at the same time that it comes uh, being released like Thor, Love and Thunder just dropped on the day that I'm doing this recording. I am not going to review it until it becomes available for streaming. So we got plenty of time to get back in there. And it'll give me time to read uh, Gore, uh, the God Butcher, as well as Jane Foster's storyline in the comics, which, in fairness, I know that's not what they're going to be exactly like. But I want to know a little bit more of the history of, or the inspiration that they got that idea from. And the same thing with Avatar. I want to really go into this uh, review and have as much information going in and have my opinions form after I watched it a couple of times. So, all right. So, not a very long uh, podcast. So, this is the third one for this week. I'm trying <laughs> to be as consistent as possible. So please forgive me if it's not always on time, but it will happen at least from this point on. So again, it's coming. More stuff is coming. So next week we'll have episode two for Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And I'm dropping also the first episode of Kenobi episode one. So that's something to look forward to for next week. And again, another sci-fi news to week uh, at the end. 
Remember, you can always follow me on the various social networks. You can always email me at monstersci-fi-show at gmail.com. So please subscribe, please rate, and please review my podcast wherever you get it. On that note, thank you for listening to me and to the Monster Sci-Fi Show. It's sci-fi from a certain point of view. Good night. Helm report. Sir, there's Klingons on the starboard bow. Starboard bow? Starboard bow. What are they doing there? They seem to be waiting for the new episode of Earth Station Trek. Science, what do we know about this Earth Station Trek? It's a podcast that treks through the history of Star Trek, from the early days on NBC to the future on Paramount Plus and everywhere in between. Navigation, how would one find such a podcast? By setting coordinates for EarthStationTrek.com or by doing a sensor sweep of Spotify, iTunes, or any other quadrant where fine podcasts are available. Captain, what are we going to do about the Klingons? We come in peace, Commander. Weapon station, shoot to kill. Shoot, shoot to, to kill. kill! Shoot to kill! This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the T Public store which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.